you some of the information I put in my funding reports for NDIS Assistive Technology that helps my clients be able to get the funding they need to get the equipment they need so they can meet their goals. The NDIS have a form that's available on their website that um, includes the information that they need to be able to help them make decisions. Now, first of all, make sure that you're always using the latest version of the, um, the form because they have updated it quite a few times. It's really important that you make sure you have the right form that has all the information they need. Otherwise, your report might get rejected just because you used the wrong form and didn't provide all the information required. Yeah, don't want that. So make sure you download that um, and don't use the save one off your own computer. The NDIS is all about matching reasonable and necessary to the person's goals, um, their disability and their functional needs and the outcomes and how that might over help them overcome some of the limitations their disability um, has left them with. So first of all I look at um, what the person's goals are. Now this is varies widely from client to client. Some of my clients have some really specific goals about, um, now I'm a speech therapist so I'm going to talk mostly communication needs. Um, but this same information applies for whatever piece of equipment you are looking for. So um, for they might have goals around communication or participation um, or being able to uh, join in the classroom or whatever it is. So I take those goals and work out how that relates to what I'm trying to achieve. Now for communication, I'm looking at participation, I'm looking at um, maybe they have some social goals, making friends. Um, and the same can be done for all other sorts of equipment. But sometimes they have some really broad goals, like I want to live a, um, a good life. Um, and I've had a few clients that have goals have boiled down to essentially, I just want to live a good life. And so I've had to interpret a little bit of what, what a good life might entail, like um, making friends, participating in my communicate community, getting my needs met, um, all the things that make up a good life. And in that case, I often include um, the, the specific speech therapy goals that we have, um, which might be more specific than the plan goal or the life goal that the person has, which is completely natural that your life goal might be to um, be able to go to university, but you have some specific therapeutic goals that might um, be the steps along the way to achieve that. that clearly aren't written down, unless you are in a therapeutic process. I then, um, I've usually done at least two trials, and then for communication and alternative communication, I've often done a multitude of trials, because I might trial two or three pieces of hardware and two or three pieces of software, which can be used on different devices that each have um, different features that make it um, better or less, less useful for the person. So sometimes, I have done well, effectively 10 or 15 different trials with a few pieces of equipment combinations. So I break it down to the most important ones and lay out um, and the ones that I know the NDIS are looking for. Like, is an iPad able to meet this person's needs over a more expensive specialised communication system? Because that comes down to the cost um, thing and that's the question the NDIS are asking. So I usually compare an iPad and trial an iPad, which might be across a couple of sessions rather than a take-home trial, and see which one works best for each individual client. And I think you need to be really clear about what what makes it better and think about some of the common arguments people might have, like cost, ease of use, you need to think about the training, and also their ability to participate um, in, in the environments they are. So for a child, that would include their education environments, does this allow them to participate in the curriculum needs? Not changing the curriculum at all because the NDIS doesn't fund that. But does this help them to be a better participant in the environments that they spend time in? So I look at, look at those things and I also look at their future needs. So um, many communication devices allow the person to be able to access environmental control if it's a dedicated device. And so I look at what's the likelihood of that person needing to be able to access that in the next couple of years. Um, so some of my children are mobile and probably don't need to have a great deal of environmental control because they can get up and change the channel on the TV or turn the light on and off. But other of my clients um, have physical needs, so that's another consideration that I have. 
and then I think about what the person wants as well. Uh, naturally, the, the client's perspective is really important, so I talk about how they've found the trial and what sort of things they have um, learned from doing that trial and whether they agree with me that the piece of equipment I recommend is indeed right for them. Uh, once I've completed all that, which generally takes me a while to think about all the arguments that the NDIS might have for and against that particular piece of equipment um, for that particular person, I then send it off and then the process t tends to take a while, I have to say at this stage, um, quite a bit longer than I would consider for many of my clients to be reasonable, um, given that they're children and they're growing and um, I'm talking about communication, so delays in access to communication can have significant delays on their, their future. And I also talk about that in my reports, that um, why this is urgently required um, for their development and for the future impact on their lives. So there's a few tips that I have for uh, filling out those NDIS forms. Um, I Another tip actually just that I want to share with you is sometimes I have a lot to write um, because I'm talking about complex equipment and I find the NDIS form a little bit uh, challenging to use. So I often write it in a separate document and in the NDIS boxes um, refer to my other document and match the headings and the num numbering system so that it's easy for the planner to refer across so that I can get my message across without um, losing information in the formatting of um, their form. So I would love to hear from you guys what's working for you in getting the funding for your clients so that they can get the equipment they need to meet their goals. Uh, have you got any tips for um, the sort of things that you prescribe? Any questions that you know the NDIS always shoot back to you um, or to the client as they tend to do because they don't communicate with clinicians because of consent issues that's written into the legislation and um, share what's working if you have any particular challenges getting any sort of equipment that um, your clients need but isn't being funded please share with me, we can problem solve together, inform the community and we can learn from each other. Looking forward to joining you in the conversation, I'll talk to you soon.